Hi guys! This is Janelle and welcome back to my channel. Hi guys! Bago ako magsimula ngayon, gusto ko lang batiin yung aking mga loyal followers. Ren Ryan Gomez, Jun Dultra, Sean Dior Pasiguron, Carl Joshua Benitez, and Datu Mamba. Thank you, thank you guys for following Yay! and watching my videos. Kung meron kayo mga kamag-anak, kapatid, girlfriend, please, guys, sabihan nyo sila to please subscribe on my channel. Thank you! Ang game na i-feature ko ngayon ay ang laro ni Grandmaster Darwin Lilo against a 2700 plus Grandmaster na si David Navara. Si David Navara ay... If I'm not mistaken, nakapasok siya before sa top 20 in the world. So, hindi basta-basta player yung kalaban ng GM daw dito. And they played in the 2009 World Cup. Gusto ko lang balikan yung isa sa mga best wins ni Grandmaster Darwin Lilo because I think it is very fitting that just recently, uh, it was announced by our executive director, Attorney Claiborne Orbe, that... Uh, Darwin Lilo will be part of our five-man team in the 2020 World Chess Olympiad. So, let's take this opportunity para makita natin yung at mamangha sa mga games na nagawa before ng isang na ating local grandmaster. And did you know pala, sa World Cup, anim na Pinoy pa lang ang nakakarating doon. No? Ang unang-unang Pinoy na nakasali sa World Cup ay si Grandmaster Joey Antonio and then next si Grandmaster Mark Paragua, Wesley So. Oliver Barbosa, and ito si Grandmaster Dao, and yung pinaka-last natin na naipadalo doon, or naka-qualify para sa World Cup, is si Grandmaster Julio Catalino Sadora, our number one rated Filipino player. Okay, enough with that, and uh, simulan na natin, simulan na natin ang laro. Okay, in this game, Darwin played uh, D4. Darwin played D4. Knight F6, tinira ni Navara, C4. G6, Knight C3, and here Navara played D5. Ito yung tinatawag natin Grunfeld Defense. So, gusto mo mag-counter agad sa gitna. After D5, C D5, which is normal, uh, capture towards the center, yung mga ganong klaseng principle. But that's a normal line. C D5, Knight D5. And here, Darwin played a sideline, Bishop to D2. Which, ang intention niyan, kapag kinain yung kabayo sa C3, uh, Bishop C3 ngayon, no, para uh, may counter, ano siya, counter kalaban dito sa Bishop na sa G7. Kasi at later, at one point lalagay talaga yun dyan eh. And also, hindi basta-basta mapipressure yung gitna, na, yung center ni Dao dito. Because, ang main line kasi dito, after C D5, balikan natin, Knight D5, ang main line talaga is E4. Ito yung tinatawag natin, uh, yeah, main line ng Grunfeld Defense. Knight c3, bc3. And ang plan ng black dito is to play bishop to g7, c5, knight c6, castling. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung Grunfeld Defense ay for active players. Gusto mo mag-put in ng pressure sa gitna. So, ganun ang pinaka, pinaka plan na yan. So, huwag kayo mag-Grunfeld Defense kung masyado kayong makunat. Kung gusto niyo lang masyadong um, positional play kasi sa Grunfeld, maraming tactics dyan normally. So, in this game, Darwin played a respectable sideline, bishop to d2. Ang plana niyan kasi is very simple, to reinforce the center by your bishop. Tapos at one point, pwede tumira ng queen d2 and castling queen side. Yung mga ganong lines. Okay, so, after bishop to d2, Nag-develop lang, bishop to g7. And did you know also, as black, sa tagal-tagal kong kakilala si Darwin, I know that he's playing Gruenfield defense also for black. So, curious rin ako, anong klaseng uh, defense yung, anong klaseng setup yung gagawin niya kung siya naman yung kumakalaban sa opening na ginagamit niya. And here, yun nga, bishop dito yung pinili niya. e4, knight to b6. Meron ding line na kumakain, no? Knight c3, bishop c3, and ayun na nga yung sinabi ko sa inyo na to play queen d2 and casting p side. So, knight b6, bishop e3, natural, protectionan yung dapat mong protectionan, yung pawn sa d4. So, nag-castle, 
And here, I like this little pawn move, h3. Kasi, ang plano niya is, titira ka ng knight f3 without allowing this kind of pin, bishop to g4. So, okay yan, h3. Tumira ng e5. Although, it's for black, meron ding choice, no? Meron, gan meron ding ganitong classic setup to play knight c6, knight f3, and f5. Tandaan nito sa Gruenfield, no? Uh, kadalasan din talaga tumitira yung black ng f5 because at one point, lalo na gustong-gusto niyang mag-push yan because, for example lang, example, tumira ng e5, may weakness dito sa d5 square. So, merong class, may ganitong classing plan, no? Uh, to play bishop to e6 and maybe knight d5, bishop d5. Meron kang blockade sa light square sa tinatawag. So, sa magagaling na player, hindi naman basta-basta titira ng push pawn niya ng e5. Kasi hindi lahat ng nag-gain ka ng center, ibig sabihin, maganda. Because sometimes, uh, ay binibigay kang square to gain another square. So, sa ganitong sitwasyon, hindi yun pwede. So, after h3, tumira yung black ng e5, which is to counter sa gitna kaagad. Darwin played knight f3, e d4, and bishop to d4. Natural, bishop ang papangkain niya dyan to challenge the... Uh, bishop on g7 para wala nang pressure sa diagonal. So, bishop takes d4, knight to c6, kinain, bishop g7, king g7, and here, bishop to d5 is still uh, book line. It's still book line. So, tumira ng bishop to d7. Although, kung gusto mo lang to play into an endgame, David Navarro could have played queen takes d1, rook d1, and bishop to d7. But here, I think, being the higher rated player, he wants to at least retain more pieces para mas maging may chance to complicate it more. So, after bishop d7, castling, tumira si David Navarra ng queen to e7. Although, pwede na sana, could have just played a6 para uh, malaman niya talaga kung saan ba talaga pupunta tong bishop na to. Ang kulit ng bishop na to eh. So, at least, alam mo na, you're putting into question to this bishop. And here, David Navarro played queen to e7, which I think is a dubious move because natiraan siya ni Darwin nito, knight to d5. Kinain. Obviously, di, di pa din kainin niya ang pawn sa e4 because may tactics na ganun and then kain yung uh, bishop sa d7. So, um, kinain, knight e5, ed5, knight e5 para active. Pwede rin bumalik sa knight b8, although it doesn't look so good kasi binabalik mo sa um, initial square yung kabayo. So, knight e5, kain, knight e5, bishop b5, and rook to e1. And here, I think, white is already better because of may mga threat ng queen d4, uh, atake sa diagonal, knight to g4, knight g6 even, so, I'm sorry, so, queen to d6, and malis siya sa pin, yung tatag ng pin, queen to b3, attacking the bishop on b5 and the pawn on b7. Gusto natin medyo ma-misplace yung bishop, no? So, pumunta siya sa bishop to a6. Queen to c3. Uh, yun na. So, dahil nagawa mo na yung purpose mo sa b3, napaatras mo na yung bishop, no? So, dito ka ulit. Balik ka ulit sa main na plano mo. Nakulitin siya sa diagonal. So, queen to c3. F6, syempre. Para magkaroon naman ng konting cover yung king niya. Knight g4. Threatening rook to e6, obviously. Ubus siya dyan. So, tumira ng rook a e8 to defend the threat. So, rook a e8, tumira si Dao ng rook a c1, creating another um, annoyance sa position ng black kasi weak na naman yung pawn sa c7 eh. So, rook a c1, kumain, rook e1, rook e1, and here, na blunder si David Navarra. He played h5. Um, which is also understandable kasi gusto mo nang mapaalis yung kabaya sa g4. Masyado siya malakas. Meron siyang threat sa f6. But, a better move could have been rook to f7 na para pag rook e6 niya, active pa rin yung queen sa f4. Because in this kind of line, although medyo walang ginagawa yung, I'm sorry, although medyo walang ginagawa yung bishop sa a6, lamang pa rin talaga yung white dito, but at least yung queen medyo active siya. So after uh, h5, ang sinabi ko sa inyo before sa previous videos, kapag inaatake ka, always find uh, counterplay. Hindi ka muna pwedeng umatras. Uh, find your resources first. So, rook to e6, queen d8, and knight e3. And here, David Navarra played d6 to play bishop to c8 at one point. 
para mapaalis niya yung annoying rook sa 6 o kaya, yun. But here, ang ganda lang napili yung plano ni Dao, ni Grandmaster Darwin. And it's G4. Usually, di ba, before, ng mga bata pa lang tayo, sinasabi, do not move the pawns in front of your king kasi may expose ka. But then, as what I've told you in my first ever uh, clip, ang weakness, it's only a weakness if it can be exploited. And here, although weak ang maaring masab by technicality, pwede mo masabing weak yung uh, squares in front of the white king. Bale, wala yun because wala namang, wala namang pyesa yung black to exploit that. So, tumira si Navarre ng bishop to b7. Um, wala lang, threat lamok lang din. Parang gusto niya lang din uh, ma-pressure yung yung pawn sa d5. Para kunwari, madepensahan ng white. But hindi yan pinansin ni Dao. He just played g5. And, obviously, bawal kumain ng bishop d5 because of this tactics. Mawa one piece down siya. Okay, so, uh, nilet go niya na lang. Hinayaan niya na lang makain yung pawn sa f6. Wala na siyang magawa. So, yan talaga sa buhay. Pag wala ka nang magawa, you just have to let go. Pabayaan mo na lang. And control the damage. So, may bishop si h siya. Kumain si Dao. Gf6 check. King to g8. And rook to e7. And dito, panalo na yung white. Because may threat. Unstoppable yung threat niya eh, to play something like rook g7, king h8, and f7. Although, yes, pwede siyang i-stop no, by playing rook f7. Pero, grabe naman yung dating ng reyna, queen to e5, and lilipat na siya sa queen side. So, queen to e5, tumira ng queen d6, chumek mo na si Dao, rook f8, and queen. Rook f8, and queen to g5. Nag-resign na because of this, no? Check, and... Yun lang, what a fantastic game by Grandmaster Darwin Lilo. Uh, actually, I really didn't expect na nakalaban niya yung ganitong klaseng world-class player, si David Navarra. Uh, I met David Navarra in the 2014 World Chess Olympiad sa Norway. Uh, Nagpa-picture pa ako dyan. And, uh, maraming, I mean, in this game, you can see, kaya pala makipagsabayan ng Pinoy sa mga... 2700-2600 GMs. And, yun lang, and I hope nag-enjoy kayo. Let us support uh, Grandmaster Darwin Lilo and also the whole Philippine team na maglalaro ngayon sa World Chess Olympiad in Moscow. Thank you guys, and see you next time.